What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So, I'm in the middle of editing this video that you're currently watching and I accidentally just deleted the intro. So, here we are. But, today's video is going to be a quick and easy video. I'm just going to be giving a little makeover to this wind chime that you see right here. So, this used to look like this. So, that's what we're doing in today's video and like I've been telling you guys, I I really don't want this channel to just be stained glass, so I want to start showing you guys all of the random crafts and art projects that I do on a daily basis, whether or not they have to do a stained glass. So comment down below, let me know if you like this type of video, still let me know what you guys want to see next, and I think that's it. Let's just jump right into today's video, giving this little wind chime a makeover. Let's get started. All right, you guys, I'm trying my best to fit this in frame here, but this thing is huge. It's crazy. This thing is this big, and this was only $15. I found this at HomeSense, so even though it was gold, I had to get it. 15 bucks, a fresh paint job, it'll look much better. So let's go over everything that I do want to fix or change about this piece. Now, number one, the most obvious thing, it's gold. I am not a gold girl. I am a white gold girl, so we've got to paint this thing silver. Now, you can tell what they did was essentially a base coat of black or a dark dark brown and then they did a very heavy handed essentially dry brushing of gold on top. I like that theme, we can stick with it. So I think we're just going to paint everything a matte black and then we're going to do a very light handed dry brushing of silver on top. I think that'll look very pretty. So that's what we're gonna do for the paint job. Second thing, if you look at all of these jump rings, they are so bent out of shape and they just look absolutely terrible. They can't free spin because they are so bent and so doubled up in some places. So I definitely want to replace all of these jump rings. I do think I can salvage the chain. If I am able to paint the chain well enough, then we'll just keep the chain. If not, we'll just replace it with a black. But right now I'm planning on keeping the chain just so we don't waste it. So we've got to give everything a paint job. I want to replace all of these jump rings because even up here, they don't even move. You can't can't spin those at all. It's just terrible. So paint job, jump rings, third thing. These larger hooks right here, look at how bent out of shape that is. And it's silver. I don't know why. But all of these hooks, one, two, three, four, five, six, had beads on them. So there were red and green beads on these hooks for some reason. I don't know why they were red and green, but they were. I already removed them and threw them away, but we're going to replace them. So I went to Michael's and just picked up a very basic black strand of beads, something that had a big enough hole through it that I knew, knew would fit through this metal or whatever metal I used to replace it. I think this was maybe like five bucks, six bucks, if that, at Michael's, just some basic craft beads, but I think these will be pretty sparkly beads. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it a paint job, replace all the jump rings, replace those beads that are already removed, and I think that's it. I mean, you can't complain. For 15 bucks, just a little bit of elbow grease, and I'm gonna have this thing looking fantastic. So we've got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is start removing all of these jump rings. Now, the reason I'm okay to do that is because removing all the jump rings, taking off the chain, is realistically going to make it a lot easier to get all of these pieces painted. It just is. It's a pain in the bum, but I do want to replace them anyway, so we might as well just take all the pieces apart, put the chain in one pile, put all the pieces in another, and just paint them one at a time, and then we'll put them back together once they're done, right? It seems so much easier. So with that being said, like I said, I've got a lot of work to do, so let's start removing all of these hooks, all of these jump rings, and start separating all of our pieces from the chain.
Alrighty guys, now it's time for the fun part. So all of our pieces are completely covered in a nice coat, a few coats of matte black paint. So now we've got to go in and dry brush some silver on it. So dry brushing, all that means is to just very lightly coat your paintbrush in paint. You don't want it saturated. You want it very much still dry. So when we brush it over the surface, it will leave the deeper sections or indentations of the surface that we're painting the original color that we painted it. So in this case, black. So all the indentations around the mouth, around the nose, any bends in the piece, we want to make stand out by dry brushing with this paint. So I'm just going to take, this is a new paintbrush, so it's stiff. So I'm just gonna take some paint here and I'm wiping most of it off. You wanna get as much off as you can. So this paintbrush is very much still dry. And this does take a little bit of practice. Every piece will turn out a little bit different, but you'll get the hang of it quickly. So this first piece I'm probably gonna mess up just because we're getting the hang of it. But see what I mean? So all we're doing is highlighting the pieces that stand up and it reveals the face, and it reveals all the points on the star, reveals his cheeks. So we're just very lightly dry brushing the silver onto all of our pieces, and we're gonna do the same thing with every single one. I like how that looks. And now we've gotta be careful because this is a matte black paint on top of a metal. So if we scratch this around, the paint's gonna come off, so we gotta be gentle with these pieces until we can seal it. Alrighty guys, that is it. This moon looks terrible on camera. It looks so good in person. I don't know why it's reflecting like only certain sections of silver. That looks really bad, but it looks super cute in person. Okay, anyways, so we are done for the night. We've gotta let these pieces sit here and completely dry overnight. Then we're going to come back, like I said, first thing in the morning and we're going to coat all of our pieces in a clear matte sealer. So I will see you guys first thing in the morning and we'll start sealing these babies up. Alrighty guys, it is now the next day. All of our pieces have had plenty of time to dry. Now we need to seal them. So if you guys have been here for a while, you already know, this is the sealer I'm going to be using. This is Krylon's Matte Finish clear coat sealer. So I use this stuff all the time. I've been using it for years. It's my absolute favorite. I will say, if you want a very even matte finish coating, shake this stuff well. You really need to shake it well. And if you're spray painting a lot of stuff, you wanna give it a shake in between you spray painting as well. You just gotta make sure this stuff stays mixed up and it will spray and finish beautifully. Absolutely love it. I've tried so many matte finish spray sealers and they just don't look right. They're either uneven or they're not actually matte. They have a sheen to them, but this is actually a clear matte finish. Absolutely love this stuff, totally recommend it. So we're gonna lightly coat everything front and back, even the chain. We have gotta go very, very lightly on the chain because we don't want to kind of stiffen the chain up. We want it to still remain flexible. So we're gonna do a very, very light coat on the chain but we're gonna coat everything else front and back as normal. So, Krylon Matte Finish Spray Paint Sealer. I'm gonna take this stuff outside and spray paint everything. You guys already know what that looks like, so I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, so all of our pieces are completely dry now. I coated both the front and the back side of all of these pieces in that matte finish Krylon spray paint that I showed you guys earlier. They're totally dry. Now we can start putting this piece back together. So first thing I'm gonna do is attach our first row of stars, the chain, second row of stars, then we get to attaching the bells. And where we attach the bells, is when we're going to have to make those double-ended hooks again that I threw away to put our new beads on. So remember how I told you guys I took off those ugly green and red beads and we're going to replace them with these black beads. So to do that, we're going to have to make double-ended hooks and we're gonna do that with this basic craft wire. And to reattach all of these pieces, I'm going to be using the same, it's either 10 or 12 millimeter jump ring that I used up here. So first things first, we gotta get these first couple rows of stars on, then I'll show you guys how I'm going to make those double-ended hooks for our beads.
Alrighty, now we've got to make our double ended hook here to hang our beads and our little belts from. So I already grabbed or I just grabbed a thicker gauge wire because I think this is going to work out just a lot better. But this is all I've got left of it and it's already pretty bent. So I'm going to have to kind of straighten it out as I'm using it. I'm just straightening this out a little bit. And all I'm going to do to create this double ended hook here is take something that's already got a round shape. So I'm going to use the end of this paintbrush here. You can use a pen pencil, a pen that you can slide it off of. And all I'm doing is just bending it around the shape of this paintbrush. That's it. See how perfect that comes out? Perfectly round. It's just so much easier and comes out so much better if you use something that's already got that rounded shape. So we're just going to do that on each side. And all we got to do is slide it onto our star. That's it. It's on there. So now I'm just going to pinch it closed nice and tight and right where those points meet i'm going to take my pliers and bend it at a 90 degree angle just like that oh can you guys see that okay so i just perfectly bent that metal right at a 90 degree angle we can slide our bead on and now i'm going to make the other side of our little jump ring here perfect so now all we got to do is just bend this back so i'm going to pinch that end where both of them meet and bend it to a 90 degree so it matches the other side. Can you guys see that okay? Easy peasy. So now all we gotta do is hook our little bell on here. And that's it. So, so, so much better than what they had before. Easy peasy. Now we gotta do that for the other ones. Okay guys, don't hate me. I haven't been sleeping at all, but the chaos of my mental state is showing here a little bit. Now that I'm completely done with it, I kind of hate it. and. I had this thought earlier, it's a metal wind chime, I should be doing it a metal color, and that means silver, but you guys know me, I love black, so I wanted to try that first, but I'm regretting it. I want to go full silver, I think, but I'm going to try more dry brushing first, and if that doesn't work, we're doing full silver, baby. Alrighty guys, so now we've got our piece fully back together. I've picked it up. It looks really good. I'm happy with it, except for the color. Like I said, we've got to make it more silver. So I'm going to take that same paintbrush I was just using to make our double-ended jump rings, and we're going to make this more silver. So I'm just going to use this basic folk art enamel paint, and it's in silver sterling. I'm just going to do a whole lot more dry brushing. Okay guys, so I pretty much immediately figured out I didn't like the more dry brushing. We're just going to go ahead and do full silver on the front and the back. Okay, I am so, so, so glad we did this. I don't know why I just didn't go full silver in the first place. I love it so, so much. I am going to paint the back of these as well, but I won't bore you guys with that. I am going to spray paint this with a top coat tomorrow. And if you guys have been here a while, you probably already know what that top coat is going to be. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a little hint. So I'm going to have to pick up a can of that in the morning because I am out since I use it all the time. So I'm going to paint the back of these let this completely dry overnight and then i'll touch base with you guys again tomorrow morning and we'll give that this nice top coat then i'm so excited so 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 much better okay i'll see you guys in the morning good morning guys we have officially coated both the front and back sides in our new silver color it looks so good this metallic silver i absolutely love it it's completely dry now it's time for the fun part. You guys already know what's coming. The Krylon Glitter Blast and Silver Flash. This is the best glitter spray paint by a long shot. Again, like I always say, whenever you're done spray painting, you hold the can upside down, spray it for a second to clear that nozzle, and it will be absolutely fine. I've read some reviews online complaining that this gets clogged easy. I've never, ever had one clogged. I've probably gone through 20 of these cans. I've got about five colors over there right now. I ran out of the silver because I use it so much, but I've never had an issue with the nozzle. As long as you clean it out when you're done using it and take care of it, it will be absolutely fine. There is no spray paint on the market that comes anywhere close to the amount of glitter that this spray paint has. It looks fantastic. So we're going to give a nice glitter coat to all of our pieces here, and then we're finally done. So before I do that, I'm going to quickly cover these little beads and just a little bit of tape that way they don't get covered in glitter as well and then we'll take a look at the final piece i'm super excited again i'm so so glad that i ended up going with the silver i don't know why i didn't do that in the first place but i love it super super pumped so let's get some glitter blast on all of our pieces
Okay, so as you can see, I'm fully coating the stars in that silver glitter, but on both the sun and the moon, I am doing just the outer edges and really concentrating that glitter as heavy as I can on those outer edges. That way it kind of looks like it fades into the center of the faces. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad we went silver again. I don't know why I just didn't do silver. In the first place, I should have known. I literally spray painted something very similar to this silver just a couple months ago. Actually, that was around Christmas time. Jeez, time flies. So anyways, that's it for today's video, guys. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I love it so much. And of course, that silver glitter blast from Krylon just puts the cherry on top. It looks so, so cute. Now I gotta decide, do I want it inside the house or outside the house? If it's going outside, then I'm gonna clear coat it in a nice, glossy, thick clear coat. But haven't decided yet. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did, comment down below, let me know what you wanna see next, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.